Hey there, in this video we will talk about how does the Shopify function work. Uh, that is the first thing that you have to understand so you can build your Shopify function. Uh, Doc mentioned there is a lot of example that you can go through the example but I'll show you a step that will be a general uh, knowledge on every function and how each of them will work. So if you understand this video, rest of the video will be easy and you know what to do to build the function. The first thing that you, you know is you have to have a Shopify app. It doesn't have to be uh, hosted somewhere because all the functions that you create will be hosted by Shopify. And when you create the function and deploy it, Shopify will give you an ID for that function. If any store want to use that function, they have to register that function using that ID that you have. That's it. You create a function, you deploy it in Shopify, Shopify give you an ID. If a store want to use it, they have to register it using that, that ID. That is the process. So in this video, I have created a basic Shopify app. Uh, it does not have anything. All I did was just run the Shopify app in it. And this is a bare bone Shopify app using Remix. I will open it in my code editor and I'll just bring it here. Let me just drag my code editor in here and we are going to learn it. So this is my code editor. Let's just change the font size. I did nothing. This is going to be the initial. The initial commit and I'll push this repo on GitHub. You will have access to the code and you can see what we do when we are working on Shopify function. So for now, we have a bare bone app. We have not deployed anywhere. And how does the function work? Let's start with the basic of understanding the function. All the functions will be stored in the extensions directly and when you deploy it, this will be deployed. We don't have any function yet, but let's see how it works. To understand how Shopify function works, you have to understand how does a function work in a programming language. Let's give you, let me give you an example. Let's say we have a file here. This is called uh, myapp.js, right? This is my function. And in JavaScript, if we have a function, this is, we call it apply discount. And this is how it works. It accepts a product and this function is going to apply the discount for this product. In this example, let's say if I want to check if the product type is a skincare, I want to apply 10% discount to it. How do you do that? This is pseudocode, okay? This is not the real function, just to understand. So this is how we do it. If product.type equal to skincare, and we are going to apply a 10% discount to this. You, I can probably write a comment here, um, apply 10% discount to a skincare product. That's it, this is how we do it. And now once you do that, you have access to the product and you return it. This is the important part. In programming, the most important part of function is the return. This return is very important. Shopify function will work the same way, but it has a little bit different structure. Once you understand how this function will work, you understand that. Again, the important part of a function is return. And the return in Shopify function is different. You normally return an array or you return a certain structure. I'll show you how, how that one is in a minute, but this is how it will work. In, instead of the product, you have access to the whole card. Okay? You pass the whole card. It has product type, product ID, whatever data you want based on the query that you have. The most important one is this return. When your function returns something, Shopify behind the scene, the Shopify engine will grab that return and based on the data that you have, it is going to apply discount if it is a discount function. If you are reordering a checkout um, shipping method, it is going to do that based on the data that you have returned. The structure of this is very important. Any condition you put before that, that's not important. But what you return here is important. Whatever you write here, this is up to you. Of course, you are not going to have any error. If you have an error in your code, it's not going to work. So this is the basic idea of building a function. Now let's create one function and see what is the difference on that function. I'll remove this file. This was just an example. To do that, we are going to open the terminal. In here, I will use VS Code and let's create Shopify app generate extension. This is the, uh, the command that you are going to run. There are different ways, different like uh, extension that you can create. 
That's why these are in extensions directory. In our example, we are going to build a function, right? So what do you call? Let's call it product discount. So you search for the product discount function. Here is under the list, you have product discount. Once you select it, after this, you can see it is a function. Um, if you watch my videos on YouTube, I have more videos coming for admin extension and some checkout extension like team block extension links and stuff like that. But in this example, let's go with the product discount. I will select this, give it a name. Most of the time, I'll go with the default name it is suggesting. Uh, but recently, since we have two choice for this one, something that I shouldn't forget is there's two programming languages you can use for writing your function, JavaScript and Rust. Probably other languages too. Rust is very fast. Like I, wa I was planning to create a video on performance, but it is super fast. You cannot compare it with JavaScript because Rust will directly compile your code to assembly and that is what Shopify will use. But in JavaScript, it is not going to be directly. There are some other like uh, things that is happening between this. That's why it is a bit slow. Not a bit, a lot. So f for learning and most of the functions, JavaScript is fine. But if you have a complex function, then you have to go with Rust. In this video series, we will start with JavaScript because most people will know JavaScript. If I talk with Rust, you have to know the basic of Rust. But JavaScript, everyone knows. I mostly prefer like suffix my, my functions with a JS or Rust. So if it is Rust, I will say RS. This is product discount hash JS for JavaScript. Let's uh, select the language. Now JavaScript, uh, CLI is going to ask you to pick the language. I will go with JavaScript. And also there was another one called TypeScript and Wasm. Like Wasm is like, if you wanna write directly in Wasm, that is the best thing that you can do, but it is hard because uh, this is very like low level language. Uh, let's just wait for this to create our function. If I open the file, these are all the files that you have here. Now, and, and like under the SRC directory, this is where you will have all your function. Why it has this structure? It has a reason. And you have to know how everything works here. The most important one is like Shopify um, extension.taml. It will tell you which API version is using at the time of recording this one. You can give it a name for the uh, for extension. It will appear in the Shopify admin. I will show you later where. But for now, you have to know that these are very important, like description, targeting, and also um, some UI paths. Very like nice features that you have here. And this is the Wasm file that this in the this directory. We don't see it now because we haven't built it yet. The you will spend most of your time in the um, SRC directory. This is very important, and you have a, a file called run.js, uh, which is going to be the main file that will run. Think of this as the main function that you have. If I scroll down, it has a run. Input, this is the input, and the important one is return. For now, this is returning empty. Empty is just an array at the top. When I said it should have like a proper structure, this is what I mean. Whenever you return something for the discount, it must have this structure. Discount application strategy should be here, and also discount array. Discount array is going to uh, be an array of product that you want to apply the discount. Either that is variant ID or line item ID. We will discuss more about this one. For now, this is what you have to understand. When you write your function, you, this function, this code will run. In here, you will write all your logic and then you will return a proper um, data structure. Again, the data structure will be something like this. When it is empty, because the discount array is empty. If it has something, then you are going to mention it here. This is what I mean by function. And all the functions will work the same way. Last thing, I'll show you the documentation. Before we run it or before we do anything, let's go back to the API documentation and I'll show you where it is written. Let's say we are working with, uh, this one was the product API. If I come here, let's go to that about. There are some use cases here at the top. And there are some examples that you can go through. There are different examples that you can go. Let's go with the first example that we have. And in here, they should tell you how it works. Uh, let's go to the run. Oh, in here, you have to select your language. JavaScript for this example, because I'm using Rust lately. That's why it is pre-selected. But if you check this example, 
they are doing the same thing when they return this is where they return something this is the important part okay just focus on this part whenever you return something it should have this structure target it is going to be the line item that you are going to target and the discount that you want to apply if that is percentage you will say percentage if that is fixed you will give it a fixed value and this strategy which we will discuss later but for now if your function return this and the target is targeting skincare or any product that you say it is going to apply the discount and the same thing will go for other discount of i will just show you another one too and you will just move on this is the product discount and let's check the um, court validation more like if i go to the about see the documentation how easily you can navigate and the structure uh, they have some example probably but i don't see here let's go to the reference overview and i'll show you uh, where the code is you have an input another thing that i have to talk about uh, let's go to the function result in here you have some errors this should this one should re return an error the other one was returning discount this one should return an error so the error is going to be for card validation it has a localized message and it has a target that's almost the same it is similar to what we have here in the code so this one um, you are going to return discount but if it is card validation you are going to return error and this is the type of error you just display a message as a string and you have target which is targeting which part of the area that you want to display this error is the court is this checkout is this email field is this the um, phone number field those are the targeted areas for court validation everything uh, almost like every function will work the same way all you have to know is what should be the structure of the function run result once you understand the structure of that and you return the right data your function will run successfully and rest of the condition that you will put um, anything that you will write here is up to you now it has an input before i finish off this video it has an input the input is going to be the data that you have access to it is um, it will come from a file called run.graphql if i open this for now this is the data that i have in here you have access to cart and all the line item on that cart something like this uh, probably this one is not this one is not available but yeah copilot is auto completing this but you have access to the card and all the data in the card the reason you have this one this is called function input function input has limitation you cannot query everything in the card because it will slow down the process of the function that's why Shopify always recommend you only query the data that you need if I'm applying a discount to a variant, I just need the variant ID. That's it. If I want to target a customer based on the based on the customer tag, then I need the customer tag. I don't need to uh, query every details of customer like email address or any other thing, um, like phone number and any other data. If you need something, just put it here. Whatever you put here, it will be accessible. Uh, in the input function here this is the important part other files you don't need to touch run.js and run.graphql graphql is going to be the input that you are going to need to run your function run.js is going to run all the logic for you that is how the function works and for every function it will be the same again i will just recap quickly all you have to do is what is the function run result what is like the structure of that and if the structure is correct then the function will run successfully rest of them that's up to you what condition you put which type of customer you target and how you want to handle it every function will work like this and once you understand it it will be easily um, possible for you to create all types of function and use all of these api in the future video we will focus on on each of them and work with one example one by one and show you how you can um, have like custom configuration coming from metafill and stuff like that i hope this video has been informative and you understand how shopify function works in the next video we will focus more on metafill and custom configuration thank you